Hello, my name is Mel. Welcome to my world. And for those of you that are new to my channel, it's all about self built camper vans and camper van related stuff. So, if that's something that interests you, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. Now, today I'm going to be replacing my spare wheel with this 40 litre waste water tank. The reason I no longer have a spare wheel underneath my van is because I've got these big BF Goodridge tyres and they simply do not fit in the spare wheel carrier. And because this tyre is now under my bed, in my garage area, it's left me with this big space under my van. And I was under there the other day looking at this big huge void with a cradle already in place and I thought to myself, that would be a perfect place to put a grey water tank because at the moment my grey water tank is actually under my sink and it's taking up a lot of cupboard space. So that's why, I, that's why I'm going to fit a grey water tank underneath where my spare wheel should be. And I fitted these to my van because I do actually go off road. I go off road metal detecting in all sorts of weird and wonderful muddy places. And I've got stuck a couple of times. But this spare wheel won't be staying here. It will eventually end up on my back door on a proper spare wheel carrier. Right, so let's get back to the tank and I'll show you the components I'm going to use for this wastewater tank installation. Now let's take a look at the grey water tank that I've brought. I've got this off eBay, I did quite a lot of measuring and a bit of research and this tank should fit absolutely perfect and I will put in the description of this video the dimensions of this tank and I'll also put a link in the description where I brought this tank from. Now this is just a standard water tank, it's got the standard inspection hatch and I'm going to mount it under the van this way up and the reason for that is if any nasty stuff does go down my plug hole and ends up blocking anything I'll be able to undo this inspection hatch whilst it's underneath my van, I can undo it he says, I'll be able to undo it and flush it out basically, I can clean it out, it'll be a lot easier to clean out, I won't have to remove the tank to do it. Now in the past I've fitted these tanks on their side and people have said to me in the comments of those videos that it's going to leak, they're not meant to be on this side, it's meant to be inspection hatch up. Well let me show you something, for those of you that doubt this is going to seal properly, just take a look at the rubber seal on this. It is absolutely huge and I've never ever had one of these leak before, especially I mean when you do these up really tight there's no way they're going to leak. So I'm quite confident if I mount this tank upside down with the inspection hatch at the bottom it's not going to leak. I absolutely no doubt in my mind that it will not leak. So that's the tank, and like I say, I will put all the details to this tank in the description of this video for those of you that are interested in the size and the dimensions and stuff. So let's take a look at the water fittings I've got. I've got some uh, quite special fittings and I've been quite particular about what I'm going to use. So the pipe I'm going to be using is 19mm and the reason for this is because my plug and my sink is 19mm so this pretty much dictates the size of the pipe fittings I'm going to be using. So I'm going to use 19mm flexible pipe and I believe this is really meant for fish ponds and irrigation and stuff. Now the drainage from the tank to the outlet I'm going to do um, a little bit special, I'm going to use an electrical solenoid. So all I've got to do when I want to empty my tank is flick a switch and hopefully if this works properly all the water should then just drain out of my tank. Now the only downside with this is, um, if, I show, if I hold this up to the camera you'll see the hole in the middle of that is quite small and I'm worried that I'm going to get food stuff in there blocking it up. So to try and prevent any food stuff blocking my electric solenoid valve Going to use two things. One of them is a, a waste catcher. Put that down. This is like a little bowl, like similar to what you'd have in a normal domestic sink, but this is going to go underneath my van so I can easily undo this and anything solid hopefully will catch in this bowl. Any um, bits of rice or anything like that or currants from when I make my rum, rum and raisin ice cream, hopefully this will catch them and stop them blocking my solenoid. And another thing I'm going to use to hopefully stop my solenoid getting blocked is the waste pipe. This this is fitting is going to go into the side of the tank and so the, this side will be inside the tank, this little grill, it's like a pre-filter. I'll do that. 
So this is going to go through the side of the tank, my waste pipe is going to come out of there, going to have my electrical solenoid and then the tailpipe to go into the drainage system. And this hopefully will stop any, again, try and stop any waste, any solids that end up going down my plug hole, going into that electrical solenoid. It took me ages to find this um, online. So um, yeah, I'll put a link in the description again to all these fittings. But this is my, hopefully my defense against my electrical solenoid valve getting stuck um, or filled with stuff. And the rest of the fittings are just normal pipe fittings. These are gonna be going on this like that. And these are actually meant for taps. So it's quite handy. They are three quarter inch. So these are three quarter inch tap fittings. Again, 19 mil should be all quite straightforward. Because I'm using 19mm fittings with three quarter threaded fittings, all the parts are quite easy to find. So that's simply going to go like that. There you go. So that's that part assembled already. Right, drilling some holes in the tank. Um, so I'm going to drill the holes, put the fittings in place before I actually put the tank underneath the van. Let's drop this down. Look at this cradle, it is perfect for a water tank. So let's get the water tank. I'm going to put it in the cradle and then mark where I'm going to put the water fittings in the side of the tank. So I need to drill some holes in it. That ain't going to work. Drop that side. That's it. Oh, it's a tight fit, but there you go, I thought it would be, that's it, there you go, look at that, see how easy that is, now just for added security, I will put some straps around this, or well, one strap anyway, I'm going to put a ratchet strap around it, just to make sure it doesn't come loose, <laughs> right, get me marker pen, I think what I'm going to do is put the fittings in the side here because my waste pipe, my the pipe I've already got fitted is here anyway so I'm just going to follow that down as well so uh, yeah, I reckon outlet there, inlet in that opposite corner simple really isn't it? <laughs> with me pen, yeah I think that'll work perfectly fine there so that's going to be level with that, yeah, so inlet up in there. And I don't see any problem with having a pipe coming out there. In fact, it could probably go over that side. Yeah, in the opposite corner. Have it slightly higher. So that any solids can collect in the bottom preventing our little valve from getting stuck or blocked up. Yeah, if I have the outlet slightly up, it'll let any solid settle, further preventing my electric solenoid valve from blocking up. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. One there, one there. That's all I need to do, isn't it? One there, one there, and an overflow tap at the top. Because water's gonna be coming in, so air needs to come out. So I'm going to put a little hole up here as well, right there, I think. Just a small hole, just to let air out. Yeah, water's going to come in, air needs to go out, right. Okay, so I've marked my tank, I know where I've got to drill the holes. Let's get it out again and get it on the workbench. And make some holes. Right. I told you it was going to be simple. <laughs> so to make the holes in my tank, I'm going to use this hole saw. That's what it says. It saws holes. So the first one I'm going to be doing is my drainage. Well, not drainage. Um, air, air escape and overflow. I'm simply going to put that right there or thereabouts. This nut has got to go on the inside of the tank, so I'm just going to use that. 
to make sure I don't get it too far up. I'll show you what I mean. If I don't want to be drilling a the hole there, I want to make sure I can actually do this nut up. So I want it about the middle and about there. That way I know I've got enough room on the inside of the tank for this nut to actually go over. What disastrous if I couldn't get that nut. I only want this around about the middle, so about there actually. Wash up on the inside. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Should be all right. So this is our air escape and our overflow pipe as well. Is that one done? Now to make sure I select the right size hole saw, I get the washer, and as long as this is a nice fit in the washer like that, I know I've got the right size hole saw to make a hole in our water tank. So that's how I select the size of hole saw that I need. So now I've got this, I'm gonna drill the holes for our water fittings. Something there now. Where's that washer gone? Top of the washer. Oh. Oh, there it is. Washer. You can tell these are good water fittings because they've got a washer for the inside and the outside. That's a, um, a sign of quality, that's for sure. So. Still going to use this. I don't think I need to do these up very tight. I don't want to over tighten them and thread it. That's that one. Now for our special outlet pipe, and like I said earlier, I think I said it earlier, that I chose this with the grill on it, and this, this kind of pre-filter, although this is the outlet, this is to stop any solids going into my electric solenoid valve and preventing it from blocking up, because the hole in that solenoid valve is quite small, so that's why I'm going to be using this. Let's turn it up that way. It's not very square, I must say this tank isn't square at all. Alright, so I'll put that there. It's about right. <laughs> Again, the nice thing about these fittings is they have got double washers. I've got one on the inside of the tank and one that's going to go on the outside. So, uh, yeah, our pre filter is going to go in there. Someone said I must be some kind of rain god. Every time I start working on my van, it starts raining. And, uh, 
<laughs> it was nice and sunny when I started this. Oh, there's a few, there's a few bits in here. I'm just gonna get them in there, get them in the corner. I'm not gonna wash it out with water like I would if it was a fresh water tank because there's no need really. But look at that, this is stuff you gotta watch out for. I'm just gonna get as much of that out as I can. Inspection camp. Once the tank's in position underneath, I'll be able to do that a bit tighter. But that'll do for now. And there you go, there's my wastewater tank. Inlet, outlet, ventilation and overflow. <laughs> Simple as that. Right, let's get it underneath. Well, there you go, I've put an extra I've put this strap on here, this ratchet strap, just in case the spare wheel cradle does vibrate and come loose and drop. That way I know my water tank's going to stay attached to the van and not slide off down the road somewhere. But I must say, now I've done the two bolts up at the front to secure this cradle up, it's absolutely solid. I mean, it fits absolutely perfectly. I couldn't be any better if I tried. It is an absolute perfect fit. I'm really, really pleased with that. Really pleased. Um, I mean, the tank could have been a little bit bigger this way, but uh, 40 litres of waste water, I think there's plenty, plenty, plenty. So now all I've got to do is put the pipes on it. And that is going to be really simple as well. It's a simple case of running a pipe from here. This is the inlet. So all I've got to do is run a pipe from the inlet to my sink and then there's the outlet there. Really simple job to do, I think. I don't think it could be any simpler than that. <laughs> I'm really pleased. Right, let's run some pipe. So here's my current waste tank. As you can see, it's an old diesel heater fuel tank, and this has been fine for quite a while, but now I'm living in the van full time, it's kind of proven to be a little bit too small, and it does fill up rather quickly. So as you can see, that's the bottom of my sink, so now I'm going to just simply run a pipe from the bottom of my sink straight through the bottom of the van and to my new uh, grey water tank. Right, all I've got to do is rip this out. And hopefully before it starts to rain, because it does look rather cloudy. Which is typical. Right. So now I've got rid of that nasty water tank, I'm going to end up with all this space under my sink. I've got to put my shelf back in there, but I'm going to have to redo that shelf now so it goes right across rather than halfway across and then down to allow for my tank. So now I've got all that space under there. I've had to take all my drawers out to get to the switch. This is the switch panel and this one here was spare. I had nothing connected to that. So now when I flick this on, it should dump the water out of my waste tank. It's all connected up and it's pretty much ready to go. I'll show you underneath what I've done, how the waste tank sits. And uh, yeah, I'll fill it up with water and see what happens. <laughs> Fingers crossed. But before I fill it up with water, I'll show you what it looks like. So this is it, this is my new waste tank. As you can see, it fits absolutely snug. There's my waste in. There's my waste out, and this is the little valve, and I've checked it, it does actually work. Well, I haven't actually checked for water leaks yet, <laughs> but um, it clicks on and off when I flick my switch. That's the main thing, so that's quite reassuring. Now, the secondary waste pipe, this one, this is the original waste pipe. I've not connected it up. Oh, there goes my light. Hang on, bear with me, my light's falling over. It's getting dark. <laughs> my, this is my original waste pipe here. Now I didn't want to use it because as you can see it's a bit nasty and it has started to leak. So I want to get a new tap first before I drill another hole in this tank and put a manual tap in it. But I will put a manual tap, um, a manual drain tap I should say, just in case this electric one does fail. But I've just left, left that there for now just in case this doesn't work and then I can always get this pipe and put it on there and carry on using that. So I thought, yeah, I'll just leave it there for now until I make sure this actually works. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna fill this tank up with water and see what happens. Right, let's jump back in the van. 
I'll tell you what, my van is a right mess in here. Look at the state of it. There is mess everywhere. <laughs> because I've pulled everything out from under my sink. Um, yeah, it's a little bit messy. But like I say, before I put everything back, I just want to check there's no leaks. So I'm going to absolutely ground it with water. I've got, what's this? I think it's five litres in here. Yeah, five litres of water. I'm just going to quickly pour that in there, see if there's any leaks. Be ever so brave and absolutely flood it. It seems to be flowing okay. Obviously it's only a 19 mil hole, so... I can hear water dripping the other end. So that's it, that's my sink full of water. So there you go, my sink is now full of water. Let's go under the van and see if I've got any leaks. Fingers crossed, it's not all coming out. <laughs> so, <laughs> turn my light on. There we go. You can actually hear it running into the tank. It's not running very fast. It's quite a steady flow, it's a slow flow, but I can't see any leaks, that's the main thing. Yeah, that's not leaking, but it's only five litres, so it's not exactly under any kind of pressure. And my van is facing downhill as well, so it's not exactly on the level. That's probably why it's taken a while to drain through. Maybe I should put a bit more in there. Yeah, I'm going to put another five litres in it, so that'll be ten litres in total, just to give it a good test. Oh. Right, so that's both my five litre jugs of fresh drinking water, just gone in my waste tank. <laughs> so, no, no leaks. So there's ten litres of water in there now. Um, none of it's leaking, so that's good. Right, and let's see if this little baby works. <laughs> just gonna flick me switch and water should come out of that pipe. Right, so fingers crossed, if I flick this switch here, water should come out of that pipe. Let's have a look. <laughs> nah, nada, nothing. Well, that didn't work, did it? Oh, well, there you go, that didn't work. <laughs> Now maybe, I'm thinking maybe, just maybe, this electrical valve needs to be under pressure, like it needs water pressure for it to open. So I'm going to have to do a bit more of an experimenting with that, um, which is unfortunate. Even more unfortunate is that I've put 10 litres of water in it. <laughs> but luckily I left my original waste pipe intact and it's just tucked up there. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to cut this to length and just reconnect that up and lucky I left that tap all connected up as well. But like I say, I wasn't really sure if this electrical thing would work. So, uh, yeah, it's just unfortunate, I guess. <laughs> Still, it's just an experiment, like I say. So I'm going to cut that to length now. Like that. I'm going to get this pipe ready. I can't remember which is off or on. I think that's off. Put that back on there. Put that jewelry tip the other way around. We'll put that back on there like that. That's it. And the old tap is back in action. Well, that's a shame. That is a shame. Yeah, it wasn't exactly gushing out. Maybe if it was a full tank and there was a lot more pressure behind it, it would work. But because it is only waste water, there is no pressure behind it. It's not gonna work. Oh well, it was worth a go. If you don't try, you don't know, do you? So there you go, this is no good. It doesn't work. So there you go, if you like this video, please do give me the thumbs up. Don't forget, if you're new to my channel, why not consider subscribing and in return, I'll carry on working and creating more free content for your enjoyment. And thanks for watching and ta for now.